Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura, program coordinator of the Saltmarsh Senior Center. I would like to welcome again, for like the eighth time, Arthur Bergeron, elder law attorney from Merrick O'Connell, and his invited guests. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, thank you very much to Laura, to the folks here for inviting us to, to do these presentations in conjunction with the Council on Aging. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron, and I just realized I don't need this, right? Because I've got a, you keep that, because I got one of these, right? Oh, right. Is that good? Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so thank you all for coming. Uh, happy Halloween. Uh, I realized today when I got off the fast boat this morning, you know, I've always said, you know, th I, they, people look at me funny when I'm wearing a suit, you know, because I'm wearing a suit. So I got off the boat and there's this young person that looks at me and goes, great costume. I said, thank you. Thank you very much, right? Right? The other way that I realized that I am not a local is I had some extra time this morning. So I said, ah, finally I've got some extra time, so I'm going to go drive around, right? So I, w so I drove to Mattaquet, right? And on the way, I go along the cliff road, and on the way, I get I see this all these these like hill undulating fields going to the ocean, you know, and it looks like open space. So I pulled over, and I go and I go in, and I get out of my car, and I'm walking. It says Tuppenzi Links, right? Oh, so I so I said so I so I said no Tuppenzi Links. That's what I read. I said Tuppenzi Links. I said that's interesting. I'm walking. It's really beautiful. I said so. I want maybe that's like an old British term, but you know, I wonder what they linked, you know. Together, so I'm actually get to the end, and I'm over looking the cliffs. And Chuck Gifford calls me from the, the guy from Sherburn Commons. He's sitting in the back just to see if I'd really admit to this today. Um, and I said, "Wow, it's so beautiful. It's a pansy links." He said, "You mean Tuppence links?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "It used to be a golf course." I said, "Oh, <laughs> that's what it means, right?" So I, you know, I'm not local, but at, but I love I love coming over. So thank you all to you for coming out. Um, the focus of this program, uh, uh, about a month ago we talked about um, assisted living and we talked about ways of affording assisted living and if, if you no longer could stay home, but I know that everybody's real goal is to stay home, right? Everybody's real goal is to stay home. Like Frank and Mary, this is my, my wonderful couple, Frank and Mary. Um, they are, there. they are, and they have three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And you've seen them before, they own a house. And it's a very modest house in Nantucket. It's only worth $600,000. He has an IRA worth $150. They have an annuity worth $100. And they have joint bank accounts worth $75. So they've got not huge assets, but they're OK. They don't have big income, right? He's on Social Security. He's got a $1,500 a month check. And he's got a small pension of $500 a month. She's getting you know, her half of, of his. So he's, she's getting $1,000 a month. So they're, they're living on uh, $3,000 a month. Right, which they can kind of manage, right, because they do have some savings as long as there aren't serious medical problems. Their, their estate plan is very simple. They hold everything jointly right now, so that, and they want, if one dies, they want everything to go to the other one. And if, when the both of them have died, they want things divided equally among the three kids. They haven't quite figured out how to deal with the house because all the kids want to be in the house, but that's a whole, that's a different seminar. <laughs> so, uh, that's their goal. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And after that, they want the property to be divided up. So the question is, and, and, and this is, so the, I, I'm not interested especially in the estate plan issues. The question is, how do we help them do that? Now, um, Kevin Marshall, because it's Nantucket, has a lot to do with helping Frank and Mary do that. One of the things that I learned from talking to Kevin is about the unique programs that you have here in Nantucket, actually better than any place I've seen. I do a lot of this work in a lot of different places. And I actually mentioned to Kevin, one of the things I really want to do, I, I have a, a YouTube channel so that if people don't understand what I'm saying because I talk too fast and they want to see it again, they can go see the show. But I want to upload this presentation so that I can refer to it in other communities so that pol the police and public um, um, safety officials can realize that helping Frank and Mary and you stay in your home is not just about you, it's really about the community. It really is a public safety matter. And I think that, that we, you've really focused on that here. So I wanted Kevin to talk about that. He also invited his friend Jim Perlman, the, uh, the uh, sheriff, 
uh, who also who helps him whenever he's trying to arrest one of you people and you got to get locked up. You get locked up by him. But, but Kevin, can you just talk about what the programs are and how they work? I can. Thank you very much for having and me. here's your clicker. I've determined and that that's I'm going forward, to have too many backwards. items in my hands. All right. Say that again. Oh, that, that, that's forward. Yep. That's back. Perfect. All right. All right. And I have my this is a little sheet. choppy. As you know, none of this is rehearsed, right? Yes. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Um, you want me to introduce Jim Perlman first. Jim Perlman, who is the sheriff of Nantucket. He's the... He's the brains behind most of the programs. Um, so what I wanted to do is explain to you the how, the why, and what it is that we offer. So first and foremost, my name is Sergeant Marshall. I've been on Nantucket for about 10 years. Uh, I do love it here. I've considered it my home at this point. Um, I have uh, been promoted to Sergeant, um, the Crime Prevention Officer, the Elder Officer, Bike Safety Officer, um, and many more titles. But my true passion is actually the elders in the community. Um, it has grown to a very high importance for me due to the fact that my mother, who is an elder, is now part of this community. And it has given me the opportunity to realize how many great services we actually do provide, um, as well as the caretakers that we have on the island. They are fantastic. So we're going to talk. Oh, Jim Perlman, you're just going to sit there, right? You want to come up with me? You can come up and take some of the attention You have to stand away. up, though. No, you have to stand up, Sheriff. Sure. Just right. Job. All right. Oh. So James Perlman. Um, he has developed such a great collaboration among several agencies, such as I have. Um, Liz Shannon, who is the crime prevention for the fire department, Captain Shannon. She, too, is a great uh, person to work with for these programs, and I'll give you um, some specifics as to what she's involved with down the slides. So why the need? The chief of police, who has been here for, don't quote me on this, but about eight years, came from a huge department. And he realized that uh, when he came here that our police department had been missing some key components. One of the key components was the elder safety officer. Um, so he determined that the department services were incomplete because he didn't have that position. Um, we have a large Nantucket elders population. And uh, the changes that were being made at the time through uh, elder services of Cape Cod really played a role in this too as to why we needed a change. Um, and as everyone can see here by living here, and you're going to find out tomorrow when you can't get off the island, is that we're 30 miles out into the ocean, and at times we do have to care for our own. And I know that that's been the quote for a long time as well. Nantucket does it their own way. Well, when it comes to elders and a lot of the services that we provide, that's an important key part because we can't get services that other communities are able to get in the amount of time that we may need them. So what did the chief do realizing all of those? He developed a full-time police officer to dedicate a lot of their time to this program. Um, he updated the department policies, um, which were very important to do. So no, not only did he dedicate one police officer to really go out and be educated on elder services, but he has made it a policy of the department to make sure that at least all of the officers have a familiarity with it. Um, understanding functions is a key part to this specific role and training. So the training that I've had is through the Assistant District Attorney's Office. Um, a few years ago we went, he had an elder safety course. Um, again, I work with Sherry Hunt who is the director for Nantucket. I've had some several trainings with Lou Eppers who is the regional director for elder services. So I'm very familiar with how the system works which is important. What are the benefits of having this position? Well, the benefits are that the elders become more knowledgeable because I'm able to stand up here and tell you specifically what is offered to you. The familiarity of all of the programs, the better understanding of the challenges, trust and consistency. I can't tell you how many times when I first was in this position, I've gone to a house or I've gone to a seminar where people such as yourself are sitting there and they're shy. As soon as you see this, this uh, I was going to say this costume. Somebody said it was a nice <laughs> costume. As soon as you see this costume or police uniform, people start to tense up. And I don't know if it's because of the uniform or if it's because of any, any person with authority. They think, and I think that this is why we're having this discussion today, they think that as soon as I come into your house, my immediate response is to pull you out of that house and to put you into a home or to do whatever it is, to take away um, 
to take away your privacy. And that's, that's not the case at all. What my job is, is to make sure that we offer you all of the services that are necessary for you to remain in the comfort of your home. That's the whole point. And that's really the key point to all of the professionals that are in the same situation with us. So it's important, the chief realized that it's important to become familiar with the community and to have the community familiar with myself to make sure that we have that connection with the community.